What's up guys and welcome to the video on absolute values. Let's get into it. First of all, what is or what are absolute value signs? It's simply these two straight up and down bars that you're gonna see around the variable or a number and all it means is you're making it a, into the positive integer of that number. Now, if it's already a positive integer, let's say you have the absolute value of three, it's simply three, it doesn't have any effect. But if it's absolute value of negative three, now it's gonna turn that into a positive three. So the idea is when you put absolute values around something, you're almost ensuring that the value is going to be positive. It's important to know what the graph of an absolute function, absolute value function, excuse me, should look like, because sometimes this is tested. So here is a graph of y equals the absolute value of x. So you notice it forms this neat little V shape. And let me explain exactly why that is if it doesn't seem intuitive. The idea is when x is positive, uh, when x is sort of going on the to the right of the y axis, right? it's gonna be all positive values. So at that point, it's just like y equals x. There's no change, right? Because remember, when we put the absolute value around a positive number, it has no effect. But once we cross into the negative numbers, now it's kind of flipped it because now every time you're putting in a negative value for x, like normally you get the same negative value for y, but the absolute value changes that. So now where x equals negative one, y equals one. Where x equals negative two, y equals two, and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about how to solve an equation that has an absolute value symbol in it. So let's think about that for example. Why is it different? Well. When you have an absolute value in the equation, it usually means you're gonna have two answers. Let me give you a simple uh, example to illustrate that. So let's say I said the absolute value of x equals three. So right off the bat, we know that x can equal three itself because the absolute value of three is three. But we also know that x can equal negative three because if x is negative three, you take the absolute value of that and you get three. So in this way, there's always gonna be two solutions. Now let me give you a slightly more complicated example. Let's say we have x plus three in absolute values equals four. So now we're gonna have two solutions. And how do we get those solutions? You do it like this. You split this into two equations. One where it's simply x plus three equals four, right? As if we just remove the absolute values. And the other one is x plus three equals negative four, where we flip the sign of whatever is outside the absolute value symbol. And now we just simply solve for x. So for the first equation, we simply get x equals one. And for the second equation, we get x equals negative seven. Now let's talk quickly about how to solve an inequality with an absolute value symbol. It's just like solving an equation in terms of splitting it into two equations with one little twist, and let me illustrate. So let's take the same kind of inequality as we had equation, x plus three in absolute value is less than four. So now we're gonna break it into two equations where you have just x plus three is less than four, and then we have x plus three, now here's the bit, the, the little tricky bit, you gotta flip the, the less than or equal to or greater than symbol. So now we had x plus three is less than, so now it becomes x plus three is greater than, and we flip the sign negative four. And now we simply go ahead and solve for x, and you end up getting a nice range of values that work out and essentially satisfy the inequality. Now that we've gone over the core principles, let's get into some practice problems. 